Buenas. Buenas then, half a day, Dr. Samzu. Thank you all for being here. On behalf of Amina Trenta Kwachun Ali Heslitur and Guahan and the Committee on Culture and Justice, we welcome you all and thank you for being here with us today for this resolution presentation for former Senator Hope Alvarez Cristobal. <laughs> Senator Cristobal, could you please join us up here? I'd like to acknowledge the presence of Senator Regine Bisco Lee, Senator, Sen Senator Talita Nelson, and Senator Mary Camacho Torres. We're here. <laughs> We're here to. Okay. We're here to celebrate uh, one day before her 71st birthday. Uh, her, her life and to recognize her for her tremendous contributions to the vitality of the culture, the environment, our social, spiritual, and political landscapes of, of our island. And I wish to thank the co-sponsors of this re resolution, Speaker B.J. Cruz, Senator Nelson, and, and all the senators of the 34th Guam Legislature. We are here today um, to honor leadership, resourcefulness, and resilience. Of course, Senator Hope might tell us that uh, we don't need a resolution because we still have a lot of work to do, right? But uh, I think it's, it's good to take time to reflect on all the ways that one person can give of their life for the perpetuation of uh, a, a good Guam for all of us. Uh, and I would like to enter this recognition into the public record through a resolution. So we have many leaders on Guam, on Guam to be proud of. Some of them are here with us in this room. And uh, we learn from them. They share their courage and their vision with us. Um, from the years that I've known Hope and uh, worked with her, uh, what distinguishes her is that uh, uh, along with all her other attributes, she works very, very hard to be ready on any occasion to... Um, to advocate for the rights of the people of Guam and for justice. And she's, she works very hard at that. It doesn't, it's not something you just come up with out of the thin air. She actually works very, very hard, and she's able to stand up in almost any occasion, at any forum, and do what she, she believes needs to be done for the people of Guam. So we have a resolution, and my colleagues are going to assist me in presenting this. Um, well, all right. So. I'm going to start it off. The Honorable Hope Alvarez Cristobal, former senator, are, is one of our island's most memorable and respected leaders. She's become a light in the dark for many people through her tireless efforts in advocating for human rights and justice for the people of Guam, and improving our community through her work as an educator, activist, community leader, and farmer having mentored several generations of activists, educators, and community organizers, supported the development of numerous community organizations and programs, and inspired to count countless others through example, she is affectionately known by many individuals in Guam across the Pacific region and throughout the globe as anti-hope. Although her public service is a member of Ilehes Latour and Guahan, has long since passed, she remains a dynamic force continuing to promote a healthy and sustain, sustainable future for Guam. On December 1946, December 14, uh, a daughter of Guam was born who would become a powerful example of the difference one person can make when she refuses to remain passive in the face of injustice. A descendant of Familian Alabado of Ordot and originally from the village of Sinohanya, 
Hope was born of humble beginnings to Francisca Taimenglo Navarro Alvarez and Arsenio Frederick Alvarez. The foundation of Hope's strength as a Chamorro woman originates from two significant women in her life, her mother Francisca and her godmother Marquita Quiriguá Flores, who she lovingly called Mom Flores. Hope has said that these two women embodied Chamorro identity and nurtured and enculturated her in Chamorro values and practices to become the woman she is today, stating that their alternating role as figureheads in her life was seamless. They ensured that I was in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. Hope's underlying source of enduring strength and tenacity remains rooted in her family. Her husband of 49 years, Enrico Adrian Cristobal, of Timuni. Uncle Andy, as we know him, with whom she has five wonderful children, Anel, Erisa, Hope, Maria, and Christian. And they're also blessed with six grandchildren. And from the brilliant influence of her mother and godmother, as well as with the love and support of her family, Hope's unceasing determination and remarkable work was recognized by members of our community in March 2011 when she was presented with the Public Citizen of the Year Award for her work in advancing human rights and social justice in Micronesia by the National Association of Social Workers, Guam Chapter. In 1967, Hope was a winner and represented Guam. In 1967, in, uh, in the Global Miss Universe pageant. <laughs> Hope, Hope, Hope visited the United States for the first time, where she was exposed to multifaceted activist engagements that would provoke her to reevaluate the struggles of the indigenous peoples of the Pacific, and later embolden her as a beacon of consciousness, beauty, and strength. Hope has played and continues to play an integral role in many organizations, such as Parapada, which was formed in the 1970s by a group of several Timor activists and intellectuals working to resist local injustices in the United States colonialism of Guam, and the Organization of People for Indigenous Rights, OPIR, which was formed in 1981 by members of Parapada to address, in particular, the self-determination of Guam. Hope was also a co-founder and dedicated member of the Timor Studies Association, the Guahan Coalition for Peace and Justice, Puetsen from Malawan, and Pratehi Liktekzen, Save Britidian. One of Hope's most notable accomplishments spans over two decades of representing Guam when she traveled to testify at the United Nations Special Committee on Decolonization hearings, beginning with her first appearance before the committee in March of 1985 at Port Moresby, Papua New Guinea. At this first hearing, Hope promoted decolonization for the island and the rights of the Chamorro people to self-determination in accordance with the UN Charter, UN Resolution 9, uh, 1514, the Declaration on the Granting of Independence to Colonial Countries and Peoples, and UN Resolution 1541, defining the three options for self-determination. Representing OPIR in 2006, Hope gave a statement before the same committee at the Pacific Regional Seminar in Yanuka, Fiji. In her opening remarks, she reiterated her stance and her concerns for the political and social development on Guam, emphasizing that her position had not changed from when she first presented in 1985, 21 years earlier. Hope also presented discussion papers at the UN Pacific Regional Seminar on the implementation of the second international decade for the eradication of colonialism. Priorities and concerns of civil society relating to Guam's future political status in May 2008 in Badung, Indonesia. And again in Omea, New Caledonia in 2010, representing the Coalition for Peace and Justice and the Timor Studies Association. And it's in her steadfast resolve to testify in support of the decolonization of the Timor people in their homelands, Hope has fought to right many wrongs and advance the discussion of problematic histories to expose difficult truths, even at risk of losing friends or popularity. Hope contributed to the publication titled The Organization of People for Indigenous Rights, a Commitment Towards Self-Determination in July of 1987. Fortunately, many of these authors are still here with us today. And this particular piece of work can be found at the Timor Studies and Richard F. Titano Micronesian Area Research Center at the University of Guam. In 1999, she presented her work on Chamorro self-determination at the Pacific Court of Women in Auckland, New Zealand. 
at the APPU annual meeting in Tokyo, Japan. She discussed her work on Guam and its people. Hope has also been a subject in several critical documentary films about Guam and the Mariana Islands, including the 2010 documentary film by Vanessa Warheit, Horse Opera Productions, The Insular Empire, America in the Mariana Islands. She also contributed to the films Let Freedom Ring, The Chamorro Search for Sovereignty, produced by the Cabazon Band of Mission Indians in 1997, and War for Guam, a 2015 documentary film about World War II and its lasting impacts on Guam, produced by Francis Negron Montaner, Baltazar Ogan, and Michael Luhan Bivakwa. Hope also had a recognized but unpublished piece of original research on the Tetzas of Guam. Her work was put on display through an exhibit partially sponsored by the Guam Council on the Arts and Humanities Agency. Whereas Dr. Robert Underwood, president of the University of Guam and co-founder of Patapada and OPIR, has stated, hope has been fighting for her people since I knew her in elementary school. Unlike others, the fire continues to burn brighter than ever. And Ron Frankis Tihan, fellow Parapada and OPIR founding member and dear colleague has expressed, it has been a sincere honor over these past four plus decades working with my close friend, a dedicated comrade in the struggle for human rights. Hope Christobel has long been a leader at the forefront and crucially instrumental in the formation of numerous Chamorro rights movements and human rights organizations, generally all aimed at furthering the international legal rights, dignity, and optimal rightful future of indigenous people. And as in our case, the rights of our indigenous Chamorro people of Guam. She is as well an educator, well versed in the promotion of our Chamorro language and culture and has truly demonstrated her steadfast dedication towards its preservation. With her foundation as a gifted teacher with a cause she is truly dedicated to, she has set the trail and continues to carve out a very significant pathway towards the fulfillment of our indigenous Chamorro rights. And whereas Lisa Linda Natividad, PhD, professor of social work and co-founder of the Coalition for Peace and Justice has said, Sina Hope is a glorious example of Chamorro's strength and grace. She has an unyielding love for Guahan and her people that is evidenced in the way that she embraces her role as Sina and parenting our community. She consistently rises to the occasion to educate us of our history, our rights, and how to protect Guahan. Her ferocious spirit has influenced the United Nations, the United States, and our people while standing up for us. She is our living ancestor who continues to guide and light the way for the Chamorro people. And whereas Sabina Paris, founding member of Prutayi Latekzen, Save Ritidian, has affirmed that Prutayi Latekzen, Save Ritidian, is privileged to count Hope as one of its core members, she is a true champion for the return of ancestral lands to original landowners, a critical promoter of indigenous stewardship of our lands and waters, and a genuine defender for the safeguard of our historic and cultural resources. Hope brings years of prolific community work and advocacy to Pratehi Latekden, and we are extremely grateful for her guidance, and more importantly, for her friendship. Hope's unwavering commitment to the building of tomorrow nationhood and the promotion of self-determination is also articulated through her devotion and faithful care of ancestral burials and sacred sites. Her dedication to honoring, protecting, and commemorating ancestral burials is one that is extremely close to her heart and vital to the Chamorro people. Hope has taken the lead to organize and carry out numerous re reinterment ceremonies for disturbed burials, to provide opportunities for communal healing, and promote the utmost care and protection of these sacred and irreplaceable ancestral treasures for future generations. Hope has galvanized tomorrow reflection and engagement through powerful reinterment ceremonies that include but are not limited to sites in two months such as Matapeng Beach, Gotnya, the Hyatt Regency, Guam Hotel location, the Nico Hotel, as well as the Agotnya Bridge. Hope earned a Bachelor of Arts degree with honors in secondary education, general sciences from the University of Guam in 1980. 
1987, she attained a Master's of Education degree from the University of Guam, specializing in school administration and supervision. Hope's career as an educator spans 14 years. In 1984, as a teacher assistant principal at Anderson Elementary School. In 1987, she was a secondary science teacher at Simon Sanchez High School, where she taught marine biology and general science, and was also a Chamorro language teacher. Hope served as the chairperson of the school's accreditation steering committee. She later became assistant principal at John F. Kennedy High School and as the principal of Orda at Chalampago Elementary School. After serving as a senator, Hope returned to teaching in 2007 as an adjunct professor of Guam history at the University of Guam. From March 1998 to June 2005, Hope's knowledge and expertise were called upon when she was hired as the museum director for the National Museum of the Dolce Nombre de Maria Cathedral Basilica in Hagatnya. As director, she was responsible for research, acquisitions, conservation, exhibit planning, exhibit grants, contracts, and publications. And whereas Hope has served on numerous community and government boards, including the Gua Northern Guam Soil and Water Conservation District, the Farmers Cooperative Association of Guam, the Guam Visitors Bureau, the Catholic Social Service. Hope was also the board chairperson of the Guam Public Library and the Guam Museum from 1989 through 1992, where she simultaneously served as the chairperson of the Committee on the Accreditation and Expansion of the Museum, initiating and assembling a plan that became the foundation for the development and advancement of a museum for the people of Guam. Most recently, Hope serves as the Gekhilu, or chairperson, of the Commission de Finotomoro Zeni Finanagwini Historians and Inilatla Tautautano, the Commission on Chamorro Language and the Teaching of the History and the Culture of the Indigenous People of Guam. As a senator in the 23rd Guam Legislature, and was the vice chairperson of the Legislative Committee on Education, she successfully passed a bill granting 85% discount on real estate taxes for senior citizens, helped establish the rules and regulations for the Chamorro Land Trust Act with the late Senator Angel Santos, and created the Commission on Decolonization and the Chamorro Registry. You guys can clap. That's awesome. <laughs> Senator Cristobal also aided in the establishment of drug-free school zones, helped with the Natural Death Act and Speaker Forbes' Retidian UNCLS. Former Senator Hope and her family were confronted by potentially de devastating news and the frightening reality of her diagnosis of breast cancer in 2015. Through this tough time, Hope and Andy continue to demonstrate their profound love for one another while teaching us that although we may not be able to control the challenges that arise in our lives, we can certainly choose the way we respond and that we can respond as much as possible with love, courage, compassion, humor, and honesty. <laughs> while we have lost many of our Sina to illness and war, hope remains us to always find purpose in the way we live to fight, to share our stories, and to accept our scars. And we are so grateful that she is here with us here today. So to conclude, throughout her life, Hope has been a pillar of excellence and strength, and a true champion of indigenous rights and environmental stewardship, especially for young adults and our youth. As a senator, an eminent educator, an astute liaison of Oceania and larger global communities, an adamant representative in local and congressional meetings on Guam's political status, as a small business owner and backyard farmer, as a respected Sina to those who seek her wisdom and guidance, as a Tamora woman and a loving mother striving always to do her best, Hope Alvarez Cristobal is a constant reminder that the only way to achieve success in life is to persevere, be brave, and stand up in order to take action. Her, her, <laughs> she's telling me to stop. Her dedication uh, to improve her dedication to improving the future of our island will echo through generations to come. 
Mesnyun Animu Denpanog. Be it resolved that the Committee on Rules of Imina Trente Quatrin and Lehezlatur and Guahan does hereby, on behalf of Lehezlatur and Guahan and the people of Guam, recognize and honor and appreciate the Honorable Hope Alvarez Cristobal, former senator, for her tremendous dedication to improving and enhancing the quality quality of life for the people of Guam and for promoting political dignity and a sustainable future for all generations of Guam. And this is further expressed in Dankalu Nasidulas Maasi to sign a hope for her extraordinary and exceptional service to our island and extend sincerest regards and best wishes for continued success in her future endeavors and aspirations. <clears throat> Never really had a resolution in my life. This is the first resolution, but thank you so much. Therese, Senator Nelson, Senator Lee, and Senator Mary Torres Um I guess the first thing that comes to mind is my mother. And so I have to reflect on her because she has been my inspiration. And I think for all of us, especially us tomorrow people who have parents that have left us early due through um, diseases and non-communicable diseases that have taken our elders away from us so soon. Uh, we feel so much today our loss and uh, we can't help it. You know, we reach back and they, our, our parents remind us of our connections uh, to, to our ancestors really. Um, Many people do not know that I come from the Familian Alabado, and as I was researching this, I was telling uh, Rosa Paloma as we were working last night, uh, putting our binder together for the Commission's uh, informational briefing today, that uh, I found out that Alabado meant um, the, uh, the group that brought um, the last song or sang the last prayers in a procession or were the rear, they, they brought up the rear, you know, the, in church there's a service and they're the last ones to sing the last songs, like the Umatuna Sitsuus. And so I said to Rosa, man, I think my family must have inherited that land in Pomha uh, from the Tachokna farms, the Jesuits who farmed that area. The Jesuits in the... Um, uh, 17th century had seven farms, and one of the biggest farms was Choknya, which is over there where Fomha is. And, I, and she says, well, more, po more power to you. And I says, yeah, I wish. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so we can't help but reflect uh, back to the land and back to our, our parents and our ancestors and where we come from, because really that's what gives us our strength. And uh, so today... Part of this activism comes from this strength uh, that I draw from my ancestors. Um, and I'm, <clears throat> I'm reminded uh, that um, when I was much younger, like you are, and I <laughs> like the emphasis of 71 years, and I want to bring Regine Bisco here, be, uh, Lee, because she and I share the same birthday. Look at how young she is. We're both December 14s. <laughs> yes. And um, so this strength comes from the land, from our ancestors, from our, and, and it, it really is what unifies us as people. 
but for each one of us, there's this thing mentally. Uh, and, and I think that's what, whether we go out and we, we hold signs or, or whether we write or whether we just manage our families, there's, there's an activism in us. Uh, this yearning for uh, survival of, of our people is instilled in us. I think it came from the struggles to survive in the 17th century. And so mental toughness sometimes is, is a character that I live with as a young person. Just a lot of fortitude and moving forward. And in my participation internationally and nationally uh, in Congress and at the United Nations, uh, you do your best, and these institutions, these areas are so dominated uh, by men uh, that I've had to struggle even more because when you come with your issues, it's not enough. There are other smaller struggles along the side as you go along. And so uh, you have to have this mental toughness, you know? Just keep moving along and keep following your focus. And, um, and so it brings me uh, to this point in life, and, and it's wonderful about old age, because you zoom back in. You go from macro uh, into our, you know, our, our immediate families, our immediate community, and you can't help but do that uh, in age. It seems like that's how things work. And so I, you still find yourself doing um, activism work, uh, for lack of a better word. But you could be writing letters, you could be uh, you know, doing a dance, or writing poetry, or uh, just organizing. And um, so that strength filters on down, even no matter how old we are. And it's still there, and I'm... I'm but what I'm finding out is that you're surrounded, again, by a new set, a, a new generation of strugglers, of uh, survivors, of strength, strengthened people. So as we are unified by our history uh, of struggles, we are also strengthened. And so I feel that um, that strength is still very much there. We do have a lot of work. and. The word resolution doesn't cut it because we don't resolve anything. We keep going and going. There's a lot of work. Um, and I'm glad uh, Vice Speaker Theresa brought that up because today we are faced with bigger uh, challenges. And uh, we all know that um, colonization is a life and well in Guam. And we are at that, at that point, uh, I'm finding myself now dealing with soil contamination, water contamination. And uh, just recently, uh, the NAS, I want to zoom in on that water well because it's coming back on. And GWA is telling us that uh, they have put in a new filter. And so your next question should be, what is the date of the old filter? How long has that filter been there? And why is it that at one point the readings, the monitoring data uh, was uh, 210 uh, when it should be at 70 parts per trillion? And why, what happened? And so we find out that there has been dilution of the water. Uh, so when you dilute it half from 210, what do you get? A hundred and what? Five, right? So it's still above 70. And so then if you dilute that some more, it's pretty close to 70. And it's still a, a concern. And so when the water was turned off at TGEN for the schools, and they're having issues of returning um, the DOE back up there, we need to be asking the question as to, is that water really safe? And so we have a lot of work cut out, and, and I'm really happy about being surrounded by the youth, um, a lot of young people that are interested and that want to continue this work. It, I'm not going to be disappeared. 
uh, but I am very fortunate to be surrounded by all of you young folks. Sidus um, And I, I won't forget um, my family, of course, the, my best uh, benefactor over there, Andy Cristobal, who's the, the father of our five children and grandfather of our six grandchildren. Uh, he has been very generous uh, in supporting me, whether it's at 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, you know, he never kicks me out of bed, but um, he, he, he perseveres. And so I want to thank also my daughter, Anel, who has helped to, to teach me about humility and, uh, and perseverance. And my daughter, Maria, who's also here. She's the one with most, the most kids. <laughs> but I congratulate her. Yeah, she's just massy. And so um, please don't forget, we, our work is, um, oh, and my son is, gosh, son, come on up here. He's my baby. <laughs> but he's the biggest one of all my kids. So <laughs> he's also a December child. Uh, and so... Yeah, please don't forget, our work is cut out for us. Uh, we need to be vigilant. Uh, we need to know who uh, to be working, uh, you know, writing about and, and educating our, our community about. Uh, because um, we, we want to keep the strength going. And we want to inspire each other. Because we are all that's left on this island. And we have to continue our, our Chamorro people, our culture. So, Donkuluna Sidzus Maasi, to all of you, uh, to you, Miguel, to Julian, to Lisa, Cipolloni over there, to Moneca, to Rosa, to Terry, Peter, uh, Chrissy, oh my gosh, Callan, a uh, wonderful individual, um, Marie. Um, I'll never forget Marie out of the clear blue wrote to me from New York. I said, who in the world is Marie? How oh, young? Uh, and so here she is back in Guam, the daughter of my classmate, um, Robert Underwoods and my classmate. Her mom is uh, Anne. Uh, um, no. Your mom's name? See, it's not nice. Annie, add that. Tom, to, Tom add a sister. Um, Johnny here who continues to uh, work with us uh, through the commission, to Rufina, to Jimmy. Um, Desiree has been very helpful at the soil symposium, helping us out. Uh, Tressa, un unbelievable support from you guys. And there's our herbal specialist over there, and she's looking behind her. Um, Jamela, who and uh, Jocelyn and all of you folks uh, see um, Maria, don't hide behind Becca. And so Becca as well and Viv Damis continues to inspire us with their KPRG. And really, I don't, oh my God, son is over there too. Barry Hernandez, one of my inspirations. <laughs> you have to keep moving. And see Leona, see Jusmaasi. Uh, and si Simone and Mangisi Ursula, si Jusma si Ursula, todo do hamzu gini ni mangaygi, and um, Mangisi Ed Beneventis, Mangisi Amber, oh, Amber, you're hiding way back there. Your dad used to be right in the very front. Yeah, and si Tosi, yeah, si Jusma si uh, to all of you, uh, si Danny, the guy who plays in the band and did in the 23rd legislature. So just Marcy. And really, um, you know, my daughter says, Mom, your other significant other. And that's really William Hernandez, who has been like uh, my other significant other. We, we work together on a lot of our activism, and, um, and he has been a great historian. Um, I'll just never forget his contact, uh, Milena Perez from East Timor, 
and how we connected there to try and understand what happened in, Timor, in East Timor, Timor Leste uh, today. So all of you bring your own activism here at this legislature where really it doesn't stop here. We inspire these leaders of ours today to continue this work for us. Sidus Masi again. I love you all. Biba Hope. Biba Tamoru. Biba Guam. Sidus Masi Torus. <laughs>